सुप्रभा Uh, so good morning, one and all present here. Uh, I am Suprabha Kumar from MS Batch. Would like to take opportunity in a behalf of our entrepreneurship development cell. Firstly, I would like to thank all the participants for joining the event. Joining the event, which is the session on building an innovative product fit for a market. Uh, so, and and as an Indian tradition, we always take a blessing of alam. Almighty, before any auspicious occasion, I request Mr. Suraj Dubey to kindly recite the Ganesh Vandana and Saraswati Mantra. Thank you, sir. Mahapaya, Surya Kopi, Samaprabha, Nirvignam Purme. शरशक Thank you, Suraj. It was a very positive and fresh start for the day. Now, I would like to start the event by quoting this. By quoting this phrase, "Winners never lose, and uh, winners never quit, and quitters never win." As this quote tells us that no matter how many times we fall, it is important to get up and start again. We should keep going and never lose the hope. As relating to this quote, we have so many startups which are solely India based. India was. They had an idea in mind. They le they left their cushy jobs. They work hard. They created history. India is a witnessing a a brand new generation of startups making their uh, presence felt not just in the global uh, not just in the domestic space but also in a uh, globally. There uh, there are inspiring success stories of people who have paved their own roads of innovation and dreams. we can get example of flipkart now no one would be stronger to this one flipkart achieved massive success a few years back in online market of india sachin and benny bansal both iit d alumni work with the amazon before thus they introduced the similar concept in the indian market they started with the books started with the books in 2007 and now sell almost everything from personal care to jewelry and from cds to stationery It acquires Avantra around like two thousand two thousand crores. Flipkart dot com has made it to the top five global billion dollar startup, which is valued at uh, value which which is valuation is eleven eleven billion dollar. Uh, now moving on, distinct uh, moving on to our distinguished guest. I feel extremely honored to introduce our chief guest, Mr. Smith Shinde, founder and promoter of luxurious firms. I would like to thank sir for accepting our invite and attending our event. Mr. Smith has his own startup of herbal molds. He has started it is it at very young age and successfully handling it. Today we have invited him for an uh, interactive session in which we would tell in which he would tell us about its startup. So now let us hear from our today's chief guest, Mr. Smith. And try and learn some entrepreneurship lessons that will inspire us. Over to you, sir. So, hello. Good morning to all of you all. Uh, firstly, am I audible to you all? Yes, sir. You are audible. 
Yes, sir. Okay. So, firstly, I need to thank the director and the dean of your college who gave me an opportunity to talk to you all and even the uh, entrepreneurship your committee for inviting me here to talk to you all. So, basically, first of all, I need to introduce myself. What am I? Who am I? How I started with my things in my life. So, basically, my name is Mitch and as you all know, I started at a very young age. Uh, when I was in school, I was never very bright in studies, basically. So my always in my life, I had one goal that I wanted to do something like my father because my father, even he never started. He started at a very young age. He didn't complete his studies properly because of the family issues. He couldn't complete his studies. So I, was, I wouldn't say that I was never interested in studies. I was interested, but at the same time, I had it in mind that I have to do something because of which the way my father's name is built up, the same way my name is there. So, in school, I was never good in studies, but I was always good in sports. I used to think that the bigger the name, at least you can build, the more contacts you have in your life, the better you can go ahead in your life. That is what I always used to feel, the same way my father used to feel about me. Uh, just a minute, I think I'm having a technical glitch here. Can I hear me right now? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, your voice is cracking. I can't hear you all actually. Uh, you are Hello? loud and clear. We can hear you clearly. Okay, okay, okay. So I'll just keep talking. If my I actually, I don't know what is happening. What is wrong with my head? So, in school, when I started with everything, my, I'll basically give you a small brief of what my family does, what business I am into from the start itself. So, my father, he's into the movies production business. You must have seen his movies. He's produced, I, I don't know if y'all have seen the movie. He's produced, Jis Desh Mein Ganga Rehta Hai, Vasta. All these movies have been produced by my father. My father's name is Mr. Sandeep Shinde. You can Google him if y'all want. So, since a very young age, I was I was always told that you should go in your father's business itself. It's a good business. It is a good thing to do. You might go into production or direction or acting. For me, it was always like, I don't want to do the same thing as my family does because at a young age, I had one thing in mind that your family should, you should, you should always have different kinds of paths in your life. You all shouldn't be in the same business because, for example, I thought about this like, 15 years ago, but right now in the pandemic, I got to know that what I decided 15 years ago was actually a good thing. Because if the whole family is into the same business, I don't think so it is a good thing to do for your family. Because I can give you my own example right now. The shooting, the movie business from the last one and a half years is completely shut. So it is a better thing, at least if you can pick your own track. I know it is difficult to pick your own track at a young age, but still if you start thinking one day, it is going to be that day for you. So now I'll just give you a brief first of all about my business, what I was thinking about, what I started and how I started. So I did my studies from St. Joseph High School, Vadala. Actually, one of my friends is sitting right there right now. So I, uh, I did my studies from that school. I was not a very bright student in studies. Uh, after that, it was my college days. I have done my college degree. I, I, I'll come to that again. But my college, it was I was in HR college in Churchgate. So I did my 12th from there. Then I opted for BCom because I was a very confused kid what I should do in life. I, I knew I wanted to do business, but I didn't know what studies I should take ahead. So I was always confused. What do I take? All people used to tell me, my dad's friends used to tell me that, at least get a line, decide something in your life. The moment you decide something in your life, at least you've achieved your first goal. But I, I couldn't decide anything because I always knew I wanted to do business, but what I never knew. So I did my 12th. 
I opted for BCom because I didn't know anything what else I can do. And BMS BAF, I was not very good at studies at that time, so I couldn't get the percentage to get into BAF or BCom or any kind of streams. After I took BCom, the first year I studied properly and I passed the my first two semesters. But the third semester, what actually happened? My dad had a shoot in Mauritius, so basically we have our own production house in India and some countries outside India. <clears throat> Sorry, and some countries outside India where we give subsidy to the producers and the investors. So I'll give you all a brief of that. So basically, if any producer wants to shoot any kind of movies or ad films or albums or TV series, anything, we get everything organized for them in Mauritius. Uh, and whatever the money they spend over there, we get them subsidy from the government bank. That is thirty to forty percent. So all my life, I've just seen this, the same industry, being into all the movies and everything. So in my third semester, my dad told me that if you want to join me for this production, you can come with me. Uh, this was a whole, this was a proper, I guess, three months schedule. I have been on shoots before, but those were not this big. They were like a week, two weeks. That's it. So this was my first big schedule actually in my life, which I worked for. So after my second semester, I went there. I went for at least I was there for at least four to five months, I think, uh, because of which I missed my exams. Uh, I missed all all my exams, obviously. First semester, sorry, the third and the fourth semester I missed uh, because of which when I came back, I got to know that I have missed all the semesters. So technically, I had two more semesters to give. So. I didn't know. I was confused back then. That what do I do? Uh, because all my friends they would go ahead. I would have to wait in the same college for one more year. So I was quite confused at the same time. What should I do? So at that time, after my the shoot was completed, you must have seen the movie. Uh, it was the body. The main actors were, I guess, Imran Hashmi and Rishi Kapoor. And after that, this was the first schedule where I started working. And honestly, trust me, my father is a producer, but that doesn't mean I was a uh, head over there. I started as a spot boy over there. I literally used to serve water, and I'm not ashamed of that at all. Any work is a good work, I think. So, this was my first schedule. After I came back, I got to know about my KTs and everything, my exams and everything. So I was very upset that what do I do about my friends and everything. At that time, my life was only revolving around my friends. That is a good thing, but it shouldn't be. Nothing should be in excess, I think. So after I was done with the first shoot, I got a second shoot. You must have seen that movie as well, I think. If you're into movies, Malang. So I went for that shoot as well. What happened when I went for that shoot? Uh, when I was in sorry, first let me come back to Bombay. When I was in the college, all my friends used to. Meet every day, and they used to go to a place where they could pull shisha. I was never always into pulling shisha because it used. I used to get headaches when I used to pull shisha because of the tobacco and the tar, nicotine, and everything. And I, I, I never used to like tobacco, nicotine, or tar. So, for at least one and a half year, every day from our college, we used to go to some place where my friends used to pull shisha. After that, after a year and a half, I went for the second shoot. The moment I went for the second shoot, I saw that when we used to go for shoots, there used to be three to four different categories of hotels. One for the spot boys, one for the HODs, one for the actors, and one for the directors. So obviously, the hotels for the actors and the directors used to be five stars or six stars. The biggest, the best hotel in Mauritius. The moment I went to the hotel and You all must be knowing outside India. If you all want to enter any kind of five star hotels, you need to have an appointment. For example, if you want to eat dinner here and go to Taj or anywhere for Rangi Pani, and if you want to go for dinner or lunch, you all can just enter the hotel. Outside India, I don't know all the countries, but at least the countries I visited to, you cannot just enter any any hotel like that. You need to have an appointment, or you should be uh you should have been a booked a room over there already. Only then you are. Supposed to enter the hotel, they allow you to enter the hotel. So one day I was just sitting in the in my house over there, and I was thinking like, this is not the field I am interested in. But I am coming here every year, and I am not. I wouldn't say waste, 
but I am spending two to three to four months literally of a year in some other country where I am not doing anything. I am just working under my father. I am gaining experience. I agree, but it was not something I would like to do as me alone. So one day I was just sitting over there, and I was I used to take care of all the things. For example, I used to take care of the vehicles which used to come there because it, the crew used to be around three hundred to four hundred people. So there there used to be at least forty to fifty cars. So I used to take care. Four o'clock, the cars used to come and everything. I used to take care of the small small things. So I, because I used to coordinate with all the drivers and everybody over there, all the crew, the sport boys, the drivers. I became very good friends with the drivers and everybody. So I used to, I used to be the person who used to get up first in the morning at three thirty in the morning. Then we literally wake everybody up from their respective rooms. I used to do all that work. So at that time, I used to talk to my drivers a lot. And I used to stay at my house, but the directors, actors, they used to stay at the respective hotels. So one day, I was just sitting with the drivers, and they were going to the hotel to drop the actors, and I was following them behind. I was driving my car behind them, and one fine day, the I I just thought in my mind that if Hoka, what if one day Shisha is here in Mauritius, and it can be a good business here because. Mauritius is the only place in the in the world where you have eighty percent occupancy all around the world. You would never find a hotel empty over there, except the pandemic right now. But so I was I was thinking, and no hotel in Mauritius is less than eight to ten acres. It is a it is a quite big only a tourist destination basically. So. I was sitting there and I was thinking. I was talking to my friends. What are you all doing? What's been up with you all? I'm I'm here for the last three months. What are you all doing? So the st- story was the same. They were like, "Arey, me aaj nikla hoon. Ham log college se nikle. We are going to some shisha pub and we are pulling shisha over there." And like, okay, so basically, y'all are going. Y'all are doing the same thing. When I was there, y'all are doing the same thing. I am here. Y'all are doing the same thing. So one day I was sitting there. After I spoke to them, I thought, why don't I? Do the shisha business here in Mauritius because the population of Mauritius is 1.2 million. That is 12 lakh. That is more. That is less than the place where I stay. I stay at Shivaji Park. So the Hanga population is way more than the country's population over there. So one day I decided that what if I put a shisha pub here in Mauritius? So I told my father that. Uh, he let us try putting up a shisha uh, pub here because I might be interested in running a pub here. He helped me. He said, "Okay, I'll find you a place. I'll find you the rent and everything." But at the same time, he told me that I am a father. Obviously, I will be helping you. It is my duty to help you. So I said that yeah, it is fine. You are going to help me, but after a while, I want to do it on my own. So. Over there, if I bought any place or if I rented any place, I don't want to stand on a gunpoint that I need to pay rent, I need to pay electricity bills, I need to pay my laborers, I need to pay all the people. So basically, my expenditure is going to be quite huge for a new startup. So I dropped the plan. I came back to Bombay. I was thinking about it that what if I made the right decision or no? I spoke to my friends. Many of my friends said, "Ki nahi, achi chiz hai, nahi." Many and trust me, eighty people of the eighty uh, percent of the people told me, "No, it is not a good thing to do, especially outside India, because what people think, shisha or hookah, whatever you want to call it, it is a Arabic product. This is what people think that it is an Arabic product, but." I feel it is not a proper Arabic product. It is. It was. How do I say? Basically, if you want to improvise something in the way you want it, you can make it happen. So I was just after I came back to Bombay, I was just googling shisha and hookahs and stuff. I found a company in Ukraine where there was this shisha, which the moment I saw it, I never thought that. A Arabic person would even be able to recognize that this is a shisha. It was a completely different thing. I think my slides are there. So the same shisha is the one I saw in Ukraine for the first time. So 
the moment i saw i told my brother i have a elder brother i told him that uh, let us order one hookah to india to our place let us see let us use it let us see if because i need to play i need to put up a hookah parlor or a shisha parlor in mauritius but in mauritius the most of the tourism 80% of the tourism are european people and european people are not very much fond of the arabic shisha and stuff so i told my brother let's call for one we called for one and i didn't have any idea that shisha costed me well i i knew the cost the shisha costed me around 80000 rupees and i am sorry i'm not going to ask you all in front of your faculty who all pulls shisha but you all must be knowing one thing a shisha pot if you all go if you all go anywhere for example if you go to lonavda or anywhere if you want to buy a shisha pot it will not the most cheapest pot is around 400 rupees my brother asked me ki what is there around 80000 rupees for a shisha and i didn't know the moment it came to my house the delivery company they charge me duty as well on it so it costed me around 1 1 and a half lakh rupees my father yelled at me my brother yelled at me my, my mother yelled at me but okay it was something i was i wanted it and i wanted to do something out of it so i got the shisha here i studied the whole pot how it is how it works how it happens and everything but at the same time i thought that if i want to do the same business in mauritius if i put it in a bar i need to add, have at least 30 or 40 tables over there 40 tables every table if i calculate you should you should be technically having two shishas on every table a big table a uh, 7 to 8 person table i guess i thought if i have a 40 table pub it will be a huge investment of investing 40 to 50 lakh rupees only importing the shishas to my place so i got the shisha the first shisha i did all the study on the shisha now i will tell you all why the shisha is so expensive the whole shisha if you all must have picked up any kind of a pot it must be 500 grams max to max 400 grams 500 grams that's it that is a weight of a normal shisha this shisha you cannot hold it for a very long time in your hand because this is at least 6 to 8 kg you cannot hold it for a very long time because it is made completely out of stainless steel so when i got it here i was like ki what is i make the same thing not exactly the same thing but some changes into the shisha which i want which i'd be wanting in my product so when i got it here i did all the studies i removed all the parts i literally dismantled the whole shisha and uh, i was looking after it that how do i make it and everything so the stainless steel parts i went to mira road over there there are you all must be knowing there are small steel factories over there very small small factory lead machine and everything so i went i went there i met a person over there he helped me build the shisha there's a glass bottle inside it firozabad is the capital of glass in india i went to firozabad there i placed an order for shishas many difficulties i faced over there for example over there factories they take orders of at least 10 to 12 lakh bottles at a time but obviously i couldn't place such a huge order so i had to search for people who could meet my preferences for example i just wanted 2 to 300 bottles at the same time and the minimum order was 10 to 5 to 10 lakh bottles so these were the challenges i faced at the first so basically i got my steel parts made from mira road i got my glass made from firozabad i there's a led light inside the shisha the light i got an import from china uh, so basically all the parts i got them sourced from different different parts of the world parts of india and parts of the world so that my cost comes down and at the same time i knew that i was going to do this business not in india somewhere outside india and outside india the rules and regulations are quite strict especially when it comes to food beverages and something consumable it is very 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 difficult very strict when it comes to that so i made sure when i take everything because i have to keep everything in my mind agar maine aaj ek shisha bana diya normal and i just use a proper uh, a normal metal that normal metal is not a food grade metal 
so the moment i take it the mauritius the government is not going to accept my thing obviously so i had to source stainless steel i had to source food grade materials proper food grade materials given by the given approval by the fda even the mauritian government so all my hookah pipes my stainless steel materials my bottle everything is food grade proper food grade so this was my first thing where i started and i just need to tell you all the moment i started this i didn't know i could do it because many people criticize not criticize but at least they told me it is not a good thing to do because it is tobacco first of all and honestly i told you in the start itself i am against tobacco because i don't like tobacco because i tried it with my friends and i had a, such a bad headache for two days i couldn't go to go outside of my house because i didn't know what happened to me so when i started with this i just wanted my usp to be obviously if you are doing a business if you are starting a startup or whatever you want to do you have to be different from some other people if you are different you are going to go ahead obviously so the main usp of my product was there's no tobacco i need to tell you all this because everybody must be thinking ki acha theek hai hukka hai matlab isme aap tobacco dalte rahenge nicotine hoga tar hoga ye sab cheeze honge i need to tell you all something this product it has no tobacco no nicotine no tar in it it is completely herbal these are called herbal molasses what are herbal molasses sugarcane it is made out of sugarcane and the after that the flavors which are infused in it those are artificial flavors but again those are herbal flavors so the company i have partnered with is the company known as soex they manufacture this uh molasses in india itself they are their offices in church gate so after my college i used to go there and have a word with them so i took the monopoly from the company for mauritius that you can't sell it except me to anybody over there so this thing became my biggest usp when i made flyers for my product we all must have seen on the ppt uh, it is written over there in bold that it is a herbal product so when i used to go to hotels i couldn't i as i told you i couldn't enter hotels because i didn't have any appointment or anything so at that time my friends the drivers i was friends with they had friends inside the hotel working the bell boy or the manager or the waiter or somebody like that so they got me inside the hotel like that so you never know what is going to help you where in your life so i i think my motto in my life however the person is always be good to that person be it a driver or whatever respect the person so i made friends with him i didn't go with the intention ki theek hai maine isse dosti ki i am going to get something from him no i just made him a friend at the same time yeah that's the shisha so at the same time he told me i i i was telling him ki i want to start something in bombay there's a very rad thing right now going on between the youths that is the shisha i want to start it in mauritius i i would like to do it in a pub so my friend of the friend of mine he told me ki instead of a pub why don't you reach for hotels because your dad is already there in the industry he's got good contacts with all the hotels you worked with all the hotels so it is going to be a better path for you to go into a hotel business so i said okay but at the same time i knew i couldn't enter any kind of hotel so that friend of mine he got me into one hotel i was talking to the food and uh, beverage manager over there who used to handle all the work i told him about this thing that i have a shisha uh, and i would like to keep it in your hotel the moment i entered i thought wow ki abhi mera kaam ho jayega moment i entered i told him ki i have a shisha and i would like to put it he said no he said thank you and he just walked me out of the hotel i like like what is wrong with this my product is very good still i didn't have anything to do so i didn't give up obviously my friend he like he, it's okay i have many other hotels let's go over there let's talk to other people be more professional send them emails because i was never professional in all this work because i was the only person working i didn't have anyone working for me who could handle my stuff and everything so i started sending them emails and honestly at the start my emails were very immature very very immature i never i didn't know the format how to write a email properly to the professionals so 
after a few days after i was staying there for at least a month only going behind all the hotels one day uh, i got um, i was talking to my manufacturer in bombay he told me that we've got all the fda approval we we got all the food grade material approvals for the pipe for the shisha for the glass and everything and i came to bombay i spoke to him i did all the work here and i took one shisha with me along to mauritius the moment i took it over there i took it to a hotel i gave them a demo and everything they liked it a lot and it the first hotel i did it was not a very big hotel it was i mean to say it is not it was not a five star hotel it was a three star hotel but at least i started somewhere you have to start somewhere so i started over there uh, they liked it they asked me to keep to keep 10 shishas over there for the start big hotel at least 500 rooms and 10 shishas for a 500 room is nothing so but they were like it is a new thing so we would like to take only 10 for now so the moment they asked me uh, they asked me to keep 10 over there the second question they asked me how much is one for the moment they asked me how much is one for coming back when i told you all that it costed me a bomb of money when i got it from ukraine when i got everything done in as an in house company like all the parts from india china ferozabad everywhere i got one shisha made for 8 and a half thousand rupees so it was a huge jump for me from 1 and a half lakhs to coming down to 8 and a half thousand rupees so i was quite happy at first ki theek hai my business chale nahi chale at least maine kuch to kiya jiske wajah se i know where i stand what i can get it done so the moment they asked me what is the price going to be for 10 shishas i told them ki i will get back to you all and i came back home i came back home i called my brother i i told him ki the uh, lemish shlok i told him shlok ki ek hotel ka meko order mila hai what do you think we should do because i've already spoken to them they've given me an order for 10 shishas but they've asked me how much is one shisha for and i thought about the business but i never thought about the money part at that time i was only into the manufacturing and everything i never thought about how am i going to sell it where am i going to sell it how much i'm going to sell it for so i spoke to him i told the hotel that uh, i had some i lied to them i told them i had some family emergency so i have to head back to india for a few days and once i come back to the country to mauritius i will get back to you with the deed they said okay i came back to india at that time i was thinking what do i do because if i sell it it will be a product which i'm manufacturing and i'm selling it and okay i made it for 8 and a half grand but what if i sell it i i i got this in my mind that it is a it is a big hotel for them money is not a very big criteria it is a criteria but not a big thing and especially for 10 pieces my friend told me bhai tere ko mil gaya सेल इट फॉर वन लाख रुपीज दस शीशा बेच दे तेरे दस लाख रुपया मिल जाएगा वेन ही वेन माई फ्रेंड सेट दैट टू मी एंड लाइक वाओ आई गोन ओन टेन लाख रुपीज आई गिव इट अ थॉट कि ठीक है चलेगा उनको लाख रुपया मैं बोल सकता हूँ आई कैन गेट वन लाख रुपीज पर पीस एंड आई कैन गेट इट नॉट अ बिग डील फॉर अट एम आई वेंट होम आई टोन माई डायट कि दिस इज द थिंग आई एम गोन टू डू ही लाइक ओके आई एम विथ यू वट एवर यू वॉन्ट टू डू i was sitting there and i was just making a proper deal for that's called a proper contract for the hotel my and the, my company's contract and the hotel's contract and when i was writing the contract i was thinking where i started how i started what were my hobbies the first thing i thought about at that time is my mother my mom she loves to travel just a moment my mom she loves to travel around the world but when we used to go for shoot she used to come with us but at that time i used to be busy my father used to be busy my brother used to be busy she used to sit alone at, at quite a lot of time so the moment i was making the contract i thought that why do i sell it if i can rent it so first thing my first draft of my contract was what if i give it on rent and charge them around 5 to 10000 rupees per month behind one shisha obviously my profits are going to be less but at least it's going to be a recurring profit 
not just for one time so i started with the first draft of my contract and in a day or two i made the whole thing about the rent and everything i i, I remember i had kept 10000 rupees a month for one shisha so that came up to what 1 lakh rupees a month for the all the tens this thing so my friend again came and told me ki tere ko bola tha 10 lakh mein beche de ab tu 1 lakh pe aa gaya but i was looking for a long run i didn't want to do just make a profit and sit at home because i wanted to be busy and do something outside india because even it is my hobby to travel around the world and it is expensive to travel around the world you all must be knowing traveling around the world plus uh, all the expenses or the hotel expenses and everything so that thing came to my mind my mom came to my mind that she wanted to travel and everything but who's going to spend all the money so my third or the fourth draft of the contract i removed all the things i just threw away the the earlier drafts my fifth draft i started with the thing that when i give you all the shisha it's going to be on profit sharing basis i don't want to sell it to you all i don't want to rent it out to you all whatever the profit is is going to be shared between your company as in your hotel and my company fair and square 50 50 i don't want to do anything 60 40 or any kind of that shit so that was my first idea that give them a proposal of profit sharing i called the food and beverage guy from india itself because he became a good friend so i told him ki so you spoke to me about the payment and everything i wanted to tell you that i would like to do business even in the future with your hotel because i like your hotel a lot so it will be a better deal if we start making money together that is on a profit sharing basis he liked the idea he said okay i will talk to my seniors and i will let you know i got an email in the next two days that they are ready for the profit sharing thing i made a contract and in that contract i'll tell you how my contract went my contract was basically abhi after listening to this contract you all must be thinking i'm just robbing away the stuff from the hotel my contract was a uh, profit sharing with the hotel plus uh, every month twice a month i'll be visiting the hotel uh, to see how the product is working if there is any problem with the product and for the two days two nights i visit the country i visit their hotel they'll give me stay for the hotel food beverage everything included in that and whatever the hookah expenses are there they don't have to pay me a single penny matlab i can go tomorrow i can put 10 shishas over there i can give them the flavors the herbal molasses i can give them the mouth tips i can give them everything but they don't have to pay me a single penny so at first when i told them that you have to give me a stay for two days every month when i come to check the how do i say the look on their face was not so good because obviously i'm asking a, i'm asking for something for free from the hotel it is not a big deal for them but something if you ask somebody for free it is not a good thing for them so the, after i said this i told them that i don't want a single penny from you all for my product everything for you all is for free the moment i said everything for you all is for free they smiled the fa- the look on their face completely changed so i i said the only thing you all have to pay for is the batteries inside the led which is already been supplied for the remotes in for the television sets in your room they agreed to that i kept my 10 shishas over there they were happy i started for the first a week or so i was training people over there how to make the shisha um, i i was literally serving people over there i was serving my clients shisha over there my clients was the biggest thing for me because i knew there was european people coming over there and hygiene is one of the biggest thing for people living in europe so i have when i used to go out with my friends i used to see they used to clean the what do you call the they they used to clean the tobacco obviously the flavors they used to clean it with their bare hands and look as indians humko bhi dekh ke ganda hi lagta hai obviously but we are used to it i shouldn't say that you shouldn't be used to it but we are used to it but outside india people are not very much fond of that thing so i made sure that my clients when they see the product they like the product first of all so i didn't make it a product ki theek hai tum hotel mein aaye ho tumko ek cheez mili hai aur tumne le li i made proper standees i feel that 
your presentation is everything for your product so you must have seen the company's name luxurious fumes the moment i heard this name from my brother i was like done this is the name i don't need anything else for the name this is the name i need to keep it for the company this is the name i'd want to keep uh, name the company after so i made standees for the this uh, for the same product with the same name with the usp down written herbal product herbal molasses and y'all must be thinking and that i'm joking but i even have a certificate that a 7 year old boy can also pull the shisha and it is not going to affect him because of the herbal molasses so i had all the certificates literally framed inside the hotel i had the standees inside the hotel all presentation all i could do i took all my 10 shishas kept it on a good stand lit them up so that everybody could see for the first few days i was giving it for free because obviously you have to do some kind of advertisement i did that people i took their reactions people started loving it many of the customers they gave their opinions and honestly if if you ask me if ever anybody is give you giving you any kind of advice or anything because i was like that i had kind of an ego before i still do but anybody you should tell me something about my product i used to listen from this year remove it from that year literally that was my attitude of living before so it is that is a very wrong thing people told me how i can improvise i kept listening to them after that for, for the first time i didn't but later on i thought ki okay they are saying it for my benefit so what's the harm in listening to them so some of my friends told me something my clients told me my customers my hotel friends my waiters everybody kept telling me something or the other i kept taking things inside me and i kept improvising my product always remember keep your eyes and ears open you are a student till you die so i kept listening to them i kept improvising my product my customers told me and you all must have seen that uh, in the shisha there's no foil on top of the uh the coal when i went over there the european customer when they saw the foil and everything they didn't like the foil they were like no this is not a good thing to look at they judge everything by their looks i shouldn't judge them because even i'm judging them by saying this right now but that's that is the truth the moment they look at something if they like it they get it so i removed the foil i redesigned it so that the foil is not seen there is no foil to be used so there is just coal on top of it it looks authentic it looks it looks good basically so i took that i went there to morishis i got it set up on the first hotel it was running it was running good over there my goal initially was i'm not kidding to sell only one shisha in a day that's it I never thought कि जी भाई मेरे को आज के दिन सौ के सौ बेचने। Two types of business, qualitative and quantitative. Quantity, I wanted quantity, but not at the first time itself. Quantity after your product is going good, then you can go for quantity. Right now, if there is only one selling point at for me, I am okay with it. So I went for quality at first, and touch wood, my quality was very good. People started liking it, and on the first day, I just sold one hookah. That's it. one hoka and my price point for the shisha i had kept it as the european market i had kept it as 50 euros per session and per session was 45 minutes so my first day the sale was one shisha then slowly and gradually it started with two shishas a day three shishas a day then i started giving incentives to the waiters as well that if you sell it you will get an incentive you will get 20% of my share not the hotel share from my share i'll give you 20% the more more you sell the more incentives you'll get so that's it. that is how i started growing my business and i i learned one thing while doing this business is that make other people you work with happy your business is going to go very smooth trust me if i wouldn't have i think if i wouldn't have given incentives to my workers they would be like theek hai mere ko waise bhi salary hotel de rahi hai to main isme mehnat kyu karu that is even my thought but if i am giving you incentives if i am if i am paying you for something you are happy i am happy it is a win win situation for both of us so because of them i thank them the back is listening to this uh 
I started selling my product in a good numbers. I started selling eight to ten a day. After I started selling ten a day, there was a point when the hotel people called me and they told me that we need more pieces because at once on one table itself, people are ordering three, and into five families we are getting over with your ten shisha. So we need more. That was a turning point for me. I was like, okay, I can get that for you all. At this time, when I thought my business is going to go rocket right now, I got to know that Mauritius had banned shisha. It was the biggest challenge for me at that time because I couldn't export my shishas from here anymore. So I was thinking, what do I do? So because of that, my business was delayed for at least six months because I used to, I had to go talk to the government that this is not a tobacco thing. There's no tobacco. There's no nicotine. There's no tar into it. So. Or because of all of this, uh, my obviously I said my business was delayed. Again, I had to improvise because the government, after I told them that it is completely harmless, they told me it has fire, it has coal in it, which we cannot grant permission for in a hotel. What if there's a fire? Because you need to be in a fire safe place if you are, for example, if you want to smoke, you go into a smoke zone. Because smoking zone, the air conditioning vents are different. If there's a fire, there are extinguishers and everything proper. That's the reason they call it a smoking zone. So I had to do something about that. So at the same time, uh, the others there's one more slide, but that slide is not there in this. Uh, in this slide, you can see that there's a the the three pieces of coal on the top of the shisha. Uh, yeah, that's the coal on top of the shisha. The moment I got to know from the government that we could not grant you permission for the coal and the fire places or in the hotels in the premises, I got a product. You all must be knowing e-vape vaporizers. So there's a vaporizer even for shisha. So I started with those. I right now the government has lifted all the norms, so I can still use the coal. But now because of them, it was a blessings in disguise for me. I waited for six months, but now my product has variety. If you want cold shisha, you can get cold shisha. If you want electric shisha, you can get electric shisha. If you want uh, this thing, herbal molasses, that as in the flavor, you can get the flavor. And in the electric one, you cannot put the flavor. You have to put liquid. So I've got the liquid as well. So because of the government, because of their norms, blessings in disguise, my product got a huge variety for the for my clients. So whenever they come to the hotel, whenever they see, they have such a huge variety over there that they literally take twenty to 50, thirty minutes just to select. Be by me, ko chiye kya? And trust me, you can go and Google it. Soex, the company I source my flavors from, they have more than hundred and fifty flavors for the shisha. And I am not kidding; they even have rasgulla and gulab jamun as a flavor. They all, they literally have a lot of flavors. So I have a huge variety to deal with. So I started with this. I gave the hotel ten more pieces after six months. Obviously, then I was very, very, very happy that my business is going good. My business is going smooth. Slowly and gradually, वो एक होटल से I went to another hotel. I kept ten pieces over there. दूसरे होटल I kept ten pieces over there. But the happiest day of my life, I can tell you all. Obviously, it was the day my business took up. But the happiest day in my life was the day the hotel, the first day who rejected me, called me Samne se, and he told me that we would like to keep your product in our hotel. I obviously I wanted to say no, I, no thanks, I don't want to. But again, if you are running a business, you don't have to look onto all that. But I made sure one thing that when I give it to him, I make him realize that how good of a product is this. Not an egoistic thing. But just to make him realize, obviously he realized it himself. That's the reason he called me. So I gave him the product. Now, honestly, the guy who rejected me, that guy and me, we are very good friends. He's helped me, in fact, getting into other hotels. Uh, and uh, I have kept at least fifteen to twenty shishas in every hotel. And right now, I at least have twenty to twenty-five hotels in Mauritius. Uh, out of which there are ten five-star hotels. All big hotels in Mauritius. I can name some of them. Uh, Sun Hotels. It is one of the biggest chain hotel chain in the world. They've got hot, their hotels in Bali, Maldives, Mauritius, Hong Kong, everywhere in the world. They've got some nine hundred hotels all around the world. So I've 
I am dealing with them. Saint Regis is over there. Then Intercontinental is over there. Taj is not there. Uh, Ambur, there's one hotel over there. Uh, Seven Hill, there's a hotel over there. The same guy who owns Atlanta in Pune. Uh, sorry, no, Pune. I'm saying I have a work in Pune, uh, in Dubai. The same guy owns the same hotel in Mauritius. So these were the hotels I started dealing with. and at current i have 20 25 hotels over there which comes around 250 shishas i've already kept over there 200 nahi 300 shishas are there in mauritius and my goal was just to sell 25 shishas a day because 25 hotels i just thought ki ek shisha ek din mein chala gaya 25 shishas mere chale gaye i am way happier it is enough for me i am not greedy for money or anything i just wanted to do a good business and whatever i said profit sharing it was a 50 euro deal 25 euros is mine 25 euros is the hotel and the hotel's investment is zero so they were more than happy to do it so 25 euros for me it and 25 hotels so i my main goal was only 20 just a minute i'll just do the calculation and tell you 25 hotels a day 25 hotels 25 shishas a day so i used to get 25 euros per shisha So twenty-five into twenty-five, I, I, you, I, in the start, I started getting six hundred dollars, six hundred pounds, something like that, around every day. So I thought that it is going to be a big business. If one shisha be gone, my touch wood by God's grace, I kept looking at the business. I kept improvising it. I improvising as a small improvisation. For example, I kept getting new flavors. new led lights new colors new kind of bottles first there was only a glass bottle then i got a frosted bottle just a new 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 things that's it just to make it a face lifted version of the already good product after a point after 6 months or 7 months into the business i got a spec sheet from my hotels every month they used to give me a statement of what how the business is going and everything the first time i saw that the hotels they were selling 11 to 15 shishas a day per hotel that was the happiest moment for me 15 shishas a day for at least 20 hotels the business was going good and at the first when i told you that i don't want to stand on the gun point that i have to pay rent or i have to pay salary for the people working over there or anything the good thing i uh, good thing i did that because of the pandemic right now people are not going to mauritius so my work is stopped obviously i'm tensed about that but i am not that tensed because my first motto was i don't want to pay rent i don't want my expenditure to go so i am not paying rent i am not paying anything to the hotel my product is that it's okay that's fine my bombay bill aake i'm not going to do anything it's just going to be sit, be sitting here so might as well be sitting in the hotel over there i'm they are not paying me rent they are happy because they have a product over there free of cost i am supplying everything to them this was my uh, module my business module which i took it which i was thinking about and luckily it worked well with the hotel and everybody and after a year i think i got the same thing to india and i need to tell you all my india was the last priority for me because of the competition and everything obviously this product didn't have any competition here but all the norms and regulations and all the government responsibilities and everything i never wanted to enter the indian market but after the pandemic i didn't have any choice so i started the same shisha in pune so if anybody is from pune uh, you all must be knowing the area uh, this thing western hotel uh, the, uh, sorry i forgot the name of the area uh, so there's hard rock cafe there's sun koregao park maybe uh, exactly yeah, yeah koregao park kp 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 yeah that's yeah, yeah, what KP. they call that is what they call them kp so i my dad was friends with people over there who had clubs over there so he got me into some clubs there's h2o there's western western hotel has my shisha because my dad he's friends with the people who own them so western has it out uh, right beside to hard rock cafe there's a sundowner it that place has it h2o has it german bakery apparently it was not it was a good deal for me but you all must be knowing german bakery is not running anymore they've shut it 
so but i had a good deal with them but it didn't work out because they shot it so right now in pune i have four to five clubs where i supply my shisha and there's one hotel named as pride in pune at shivaji nagar university road that the same hotel the lounge is owned by me i have taken the lounge again the same thing i have given them the shishas the electricity bill the rent and everything they are not going to charge me anything whatever the profit i'm making is going to be 50 50 so again i don't have because trust me my birthday is on 25th march it was on 25th march two two years uh, last year on 25th march itself the lockdown was initiated so and i got the delivery of the this thing of the lounge they gave me the contract of documents on the 24th of march i was lucky i got grace that i didn't sign the agreement which had the rent written on it because agar maine rent laga rehta obviously after that all the hotels were shut so i think the biggest thing i thought about was this that i shouldn't pay rent whatever it is my expenditure my outgoing money was not good so this thing i think is the biggest plus point that manage your money how the better you manage your money is going to be useful for you because the money i save from the rent i just kept putting it pumping it in my product so in pune i've got it bombay i have not yet started it but one of my friends he owns a place here in andheri dk if you all must be knowing drinking culture he wanted to keep keep the shisha over there but again i had to change the prices i cannot keep the same 50 euros for the indian market but still if you go to intercontinental right now they are selling one shisha for 8000 rupees but here in pune i am not selling it that much i am selling it for 2000 3000 rupees my profit margins here are very less compared to borishes but i am happy with it i don't want to be greedy i don't want to put a huge price tag on it and then spoil my product properly and then yeah that's basically it yeah and there's one more place sorry i forgot about it goa there's this club called bombay adda it's in vagator there i have my shisha over there and next to bombay adda they are opening one more club where i might keep it i'm not in talking terms with them right now but after the pandemic i mostly might keep it over there so this was basically my business module how i started what things i had to face in the business that's it if you all have any question you all can ask me at any moment that is completely fine i would love to help you all if you all have any kind of startups in your mind or any kind of business ideas in your mind because that is how the more i feel the more you interact with people the more you're going to get your business ex- bigger and bigger because when i started talking to other people they used to you know, for example the moment i told you all i have kept my shisha at my friend's place obviously he didn't know that i was doing that business but one day we were just sitting we were out for drinks and i told him that are i i have started with this he told me are i have a club why don't you keep it there the more you interact with people the more you tell people about it you are going to go bigger and bigger and the thing i said again people are going to give you opinions keep listening to them because it is just going to improvise your product and your friends are going to help you they are not going to push you down so just keep listening to them and work with your friends that is going to be your biggest plus point if you work with your friends yeah that's it if you all have any questions to ask me i am happy to answer uh so mr smith uh, am i audible yeah 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 you are yeah thank you thank you what a wonderful speaker like i had a question like uh, as you uh, like told in your entire journey of luxurious fumes so my question was like you have almost like according to my vision you have almost reached your sky so have you have you set any goal like no this is not the stop this is not the end or you are looking forward more more into it like the world needs to know or this is your you are satisfied with this yeah yeah definitely see basically i'll tell you uh, my family i never had a problem with anything so making money was not my first priority my always my first priority was making a good name a big name out of my company out of myself you are going to earn money people are obviously if it's a good good business people you are going to be known that bhai tumne bahut paisa kamaya but if you are if you are having a good product 
then definitely for example ratan tata he's a one of the he's one of the billionaires of the world obviously but people know him for his work more than his money i want to be known for my work more than the money i have that is what i feel and my goal for my life obviously i don't want to stop at any point i want to make this company big but at the same time as i said in the start of this conversation i never wanted to be in the same business i feel if you want to excel in your life if you want to go big in your life never ever stick to one business yes stick to a main business of your life but at least have branches to your business your trunk is the same your trunk is a strong business obviously for example my family the trunk is the movies and the production that line but the hooka i am running for example i have started with the stock market i am doing vegetables business and many things i am going at the same time those are the branches so my goal is that honestly my goal ab you must have seen people talking about my goal is to buy a ferrari my goal is to buy a big house my goal is to buy this make a lot of money my goal is to make at least 17 different types of business for me wonderful wonderful anyone else has any questions uh, am i allowed to ask uh, yeah can yeah, i ask a question i'm continue yeah so yeah uh, uh, hello mr smith i'm dr priya sen gupta and i'm a professor uh, and the institute yeah i would like to ask you that your product was very innovative and it is a differentiated product compared to the competition in the market but uh, how important according to you is networking and having uh, contacts with influential people those who can give you one breakthrough uh, do you think networking also helped you a lot to you know go ahead uh, yeah actually i tell you about this i there was one point that i forgot to tell you all about this uh, networking is actually as man said is one of the most important things because the more you talk about your product is going to go bigger so as i told you all that uh, i have kept the shisha in the same hotel guys who own the hotel in dubai i was sitting over there in the in, i was sitting in one of the hotels and i was giving a demo to one of the clients over there and the owner of the other hotel was sitting right next to me i didn't know that he was the owner but he was sitting right next to me he liked the product he came to me and he asked me what is this and trust me never judge any person like that he was wearing shorts and everything i was like you what do i talk to him at first but then he was a client to me he was a customer to me i literally took 45 minutes to explain everything to him while leaving he gave me his card the moment he gave me his card i saw the name of the hotel and i saw ceo written on it he gave me at least six hotels after that networking is one of the most important things advertisement networking the more you talk to people is going to help you a lot for example i never mother uh, my grandmother she's not any more but always it was it, it's basically different people think in a different way uh my aji i used to call her what she used to tell me ki whatever work you are doing never tell anybody nazar lagil kula this is what she used to tell me uh, never tell anybody and at the start i used to do that i never used to tell anybody about my business but after that i realized what is the use agar main khud nahi rakhu if i make a hook i keep it at home it's not going to make me money it is not going to make me anything i have to go and talk to other people about it yes obviously i think what she meant by that who are not related to your work don't tell them about that because they, it's not going to help you but if you think that somebody is going to help you please talk about it networking yes is one of the most important things for me thank you so much thank you Okay. Yeah, Aji might have uh, recognized that there might be some Mark Zuckerberg around you to steal your idea. Sorry, sorry, I didn't get uh, you. Yeah, Aji might have recognized very early that there might be some Mark Zuckerberg who can steal your idea of your. Uh, there might be many people, yeah. But still, I feel if you are going on your line properly and if you are focused on it, and if it it is your idea. Even if hundred people listen about it, and even they try to copy you, you're going to be the best at it. Original, original, right? So, sorry, I... original, original. There might be others who copy, 
but the quality yeah, that you offer, original. they yeah, can't yeah. reach to that level. Exactly, exactly, my point. Uh, can I ask question? Yeah, sure, you can. Students, yeah. Uh, Mr. Smith, thank you very much for uh, joining this session. I'm Dr. Rubali, uh, the Dean of the Institute. I am really impressed by the session with you. Uh, you've gone on mute, ma'am, actually. The I can't hear you. you have conducted, yeah, the session which you have conducted for our students. And I would like to thank you on behalf of Sasmira Institute for sharing your valuable inputs with our students. Now the question is, uh, what are the tips that Three things that you would like to give our students if they want to become an entrepreneur. Mm, first thing, whatever happens, never look back. Because I, I, as I told you all, if I would have given up in those six months when the government said that the shisha is not anymore allowed in the country, if I would have given up, I wouldn't be sitting in front of you all talking about this right now. Never give up. People are going to talk a lot about you regarding you. They are going to tell you ki ye chal rahe. I have heard many people talk about me, not in this country, even in this country, even in Pune, many people talk about me ki bhai ye aa gaya hai, isne se bukka diya hai, kuch karta to nahi hai, aata hai, deta hai, aur un loka profit sharing hota hai. People don't know what is the hard work behind what all you've done. That is your USP, you, they don't know about it. So, never get demotivated by what people tell you. Remember that the moment people start talking about you, you've done something in your life. Abhi, right now, nobody is talking about you because nobody's done anything in our life. Basically, I couldn't hear anybody talking about me. I know I'm doing something, though there are many people talking about me. So it's a good thing that people are talking about you. The first thing I want to say is that never look back. Don't get demotivated because of anything. And keep trying, keep trying. Something or the other, you're going to touch the goal down. Keep digging, keep digging, keep digging. True. Thank you very much. No problem. Yes, students, you can continue. Uh, thank you, sir, for sharing your experience. I hope our all students are inspired by your words. Each and everyone will take initiative to be an entrepreneur like you. Uh, now Definitely, when... everybody can. Everybody can. Yes, sir. Uh, it is not that I am the only one who is doing it. It is a very basic thing. Everybody can do it. No, no, no. Every, even at first, I thought the same thing. Can I do it? It is a big thing. If you start, it is going to happen. The, I feel the universe power is going to help you in any way and every way with it. So just you have to start one day. The day you start it, you are going to be something. Yes, sir. Definitely. Uh, so now our Entrepreneurship Development and Committee's President, uh, Ms. Vaibhavi Sunaune, will give vote of a thanks. Over to you, Vaibhavi. Uh, thank you, Suprabha. Before that, uh, do you have any questions, all of you? If you have, you can ask, okay? Nobody has questions? Okay, so I'll go ahead. First of all, uh, thank you, sir, for joining. And it was really insightful uh, session from you. So I am Vaibhavi Sonone. On behalf of our entire entrepreneur and development sale committee, I would like to offer my sincere vote of thanks to Dr. Tandan Kamal, sir, Dr. Rupali More, ma'am, and our entire faculty members for giving us this opportunity to organize this event. I thank all the students and participants who contributed and joined this event. I sincerely thank all my committee members for working as a team and helping us to carry out this event. We look forward to having more such events and we expect more such a participation and contribution from all the students. Thank you all for being a part of today's event. Now I would request Professor Divya Alok ma'am to deliver a thank you speech. Ma'am, over to you. Thank you, Vaibhavi. Uh, I'll not take much of your time. I'll just uh, conclude in a minute. Uh, just personally wanted to thank you, Mr. S Mr. Smith. Uh, thank you for joining us. It was really, really an inspiration listening to you and your story, of course. Um, I'm sure our students are inspired by your experiences and they'll take lessons from your experience. And that too at such a young age. Uh, so that really was really uh, something that inspired me and uh, looking forward for uh, our students to take inspiration from there. 
thank you for joining us and looking forward for more sessions with you. A uh, big thank you from entire Sasmira. Thank you. Thank you, thank you ma'am. Thank you, sir. Attendance link has been sent on the group. Okay? Oh, sorry, in the chat box.